let's talk about humor. Because you, for me, looking at Judith and Judith's yeah. work, you have a dark, wry humor that's always there. Yeah, oh, it has to be. So where does humor come from in People on the Edge? Walker has it too. Yeah, Walker totally. Walker gets into this bizarre humor. Crazy, that yeah. That I find like taking a refreshing yeah. you know, shower. Yeah, yeah, it's great. There's, where does that dark humor come from in you? I think, an, oddly enough, a really innocent place. A, a kid humor. I, I have a very kid-like sense of humor. And it just comes from people being themselves, because it's, it's not about wit, ever, <laughs> rarely. <laughs> um, but I think people being themselves, I mean, wh when do we laugh the hardest in, in our social gatherings or our family? It's when your kid does something that's so themselves and so funny. Um, it's impossible to describe, isn't it? Because I don't like laughter that's about feeling superior. Oh, I found this at a play that, again, I won't mention the name or the author, who I really respect generally. <laughs> I can't. But the whole first act was all drawing on the audience's feeling of superiority to one of the characters who didn't know anything about a certain subject. And I just saw the author doing this again and again, the actors playing into it, and the audience, ha, 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 just reflects, oh, isn't he stupid, that young goof who doesn't know anything about right. something he should. And, and the superior teacher will tell them all about it. And I just thought, don't you know what you're doing? You should be subverting that because it's them who teach us and not the whole, you know, I'm the uh, pedagogical expert and, you know, expertise when you, it, it's, it's so much bullshit. And um, so laughter is tricky, isn't it? Because so much is su superiority or feeling affirmed. I'm wondering in your case if it has to do with lifting that muscle of denial. That when you give up denying who you are, something is released. Yeah. It's yeah, and there's a lightness and the best comedians do that. They say, you know, if they're big, they go, "I'm fat," and then everybody laughs relief because there's no hiding. Yeah. You know, great comedians tell the truth. Yeah, and they tell very uncomfortable truths. Yeah. but by telling those truths, they lift that denial, and we're all freer. And laughter comes from a from the freedom. freedom. Yeah, it does. It comes so. from freedom and release. And I and and for me, it's great when there's so many more laughs than. You thought, well, actually, there was a moment in The Thrill, the play of mine that was just a, at Stratford, where it's a true story. A friend of mine told me that her mother was absolutely obsessed. I can't believe I'm going to blank on the name of the, of the singer. He was America, He won American Idol years ago. Claymates. Um, so Clay Aiken. Mm -hmm. And her mother is in her late 80s, lives with them. And she's obsessed with Clay Aiken and in fact goes online and she calls herself a claymate along with like other women in their 70s and 80s they're claymates <laughs> and and she has some money so she forces my friend to go take her on an airplane they go to vegas they go to chicago they go everywhere he's at a concert then they come back and marie my friend and her husband and kids they go to bed by 10. marie's up all night online discussing the music and when she told me this i just said oh my god that's the most perfect thing I've ever heard. Can I use it in the play? I have to. So I put it in the play and the audience it just lost it. Like the audience just brought the house down. Very serious subject. The main character is dying of ALS or whatever. But um, and it's about euthanasia. But the just audience just roared at this. And yes, it's the way like you didn't laugh right now, but it's the way I had it in the dialogue. Um, that's the, my craft. Um, and I think I just, I mean, I found it so precious and insightful and it, it has so many things on so many levels. But, um, so is there a kind of humor? I'm looking at the optimistic Judith in front of me. Yeah, I, you know, that's I, my kind of humor. Yeah. It's real and it's a person and it's so unexpected and yet makes so much sense. Yes. And there is humor that comes from pessimism, from dividing people, from inciting fear, from trapping people right. in prejudice and, as you say, being superior. Yeah. There's that kind of humor, but yeah. there's the humor of optimism and perception and freeing people from, yeah. from things that are... They're, yeah, and I guess it's that you spec expect an older person to put those childish things away, like obsessions with pop stars, and also the right. fact he's a bit of a faded pop star. And the idea that you'd think that would be the young people up all night, not the older... Like, there's all this... Kind of contradiction if you, if you would break it down, I guess. 
you don't write much political drama. Palace in the End was... That was my start because, you know, and all these things are serendipitous. It's really because Ross Manson was doing Wrecking Ball, phoned me up and said, do you want to do something? You have to do it in a week and it has to be political. Take it from and I have, Great. I've never done that. Wow. Of course, they've been doing it in England already for 20 years or something. You couldn't not write something political right. there. Right. And it just opened a whole door for me. So I've always written politically in the social sense, social class yes. warfare, etc. But now it, it just invited this. And what a wonderful freedom that was for me. Are you going to do more? Oh, yeah. Snowden? I mean, it's there. Well, well, Electra in Bosnia, you know, that's, that's political. Uh, t let's talk a bit about the Electra in, in Greece. Yeah. So you were approached by a Greek company to no, do no, this? No, no, I was approached by Peggy uh, Shannon, who runs Ryerson Theatre and Dance now. She was ran a theatre in San Francisco for years and years. And a very dynamic woman who got a, a grant to do a two-year project called Women in War. And so part of the, the condition of the grant was a Canadian writer, an American writer, and a UK writer. And it was Timberlake, uh, Valina, Houston, and me. And so we workshopped it here and rehearsed it. Uh, she hired like three equity actors and the rest were Ryerson students. They were very good. And we went over to Greece, to Hydra, and a, a theater in Alijos, this incredible small, but you know, stone seats overlooking the sea. So I had to change a line about the lake to the sea. I went, oh my God, we're overlooking the sea. It can't be the lake. Um, and I had all this, the dancers needed, needed to have a job, so they, I had like 27 Furies, and now I have threes, because I want it, it's going to be produced. Um, it was just so exciting, and it's set in Bosnia because it poses very serious ethical questions. Right. And because I wanted to bring it to the, to the present day, I'm, uh, sort of present day, and once I started doing research with Cynthia, uh, Asperger was in it, who was an amazing, amazing actor, amazing underused actor. I mean, astonishing. And she was Clytemnestra, and she's, as you know, Croatian. So we were doing research, and she could translate. They're still just f full of hatred, the, the ferocity, like, we're going to kill you again with a knife, with a sword, with a gun. The UN can't protect you now. It's, uh, and if you look at the research, just astonish you. Young boys taken in a truck. You see it live. And did you work with Timberlake, or that she was just doing another version? No, she version? was doing her play. We just hung right. out. And, just and hung she's out. the one that said to me, yes, it's an anti-text moment. Very disturbed by that. She did Ajax. Uh, and we went to Epidaurus, and, you know, the, the acoustics there are so incredible. And what does it hold, 20,000 people or something? And we saw an Oedipus there that was amazing. Uh, it's sort of just the raw, I mean, when I did Electra, I wanted it to be as raw. I mean, mothers and daughters were just tears because it, I just wanted to go to that raw, raw place of, I mean, there's, ma you know, the massacre of the Bosnians, and then you move into the, the central domestic story, so it sort of interweaves. But um, again, it's, it's, it's one of my works that I'm most proud of, and it has yet to see light here. When's it coming here? Yeah. I think she's trying to get it for this summer. Right. But I'm so busy. So we're doing Born, which is the wheelchair play this summer at, at Young Center, thanks to Albert's incredible offer of this partnership. And uh, then I just found out that a play that is not my play, but a play that I pushed someone to write, Lois Fine, who was in Body and Soul. It's a lesbian divorce drama about her own divorces, and the kids are in it. and and Butch Identity, and, uh, and I dramaturged it, and it's programmed at Buddy's. We just found out last night. Fantastic. First show, and I'm directing, and I'm so excited to. It's a new writer. It's her first play. So 